course, we're uh, we're still rooting for OU, right? Still, oh, of still course. the OU diff. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still That's OU what we want to hear. All right. Looks like we do have our first bands in. It is a Draven, Olaf, and Ash on the side of U of Michigan, and it is Rengar, Zoe, and let's see our third band here. And the Samira band. So with Ash off the table, they also take Samira out. Uh, that's 380 carry bands. And we have to first pick a Kali. So we did get to see Keelan play at last game against Northwood. Uh, but this time, he will be going against it. Although it could be a flex, it could be top. Um, but no Akali pickup for Keelan here. I like the Jin pickup. I think Endred looked uh, really good on that in game one versus Northwood. Yeah, it was a it was a solid game, although it didn't go their way. Uh, still looking pretty good on the pick. Um, and with Ash and Samira both out, um, not really sure which AD carries to pick up at this point. And we will see Mujin on the grave this time. I think that's a solid one-two pick from uh, from Oakland. Let's see how Michigan responds. Get oh, Lilia. Yeah. I have heard that AP junglers are not in the place they used to be. Oh, but that might just not be an AP jungler. That might be an AP top laner. Uh, although they don't take the Mumu, they do take Leona. So we will see. Uh, if that is an AP jungler, I've heard that with the uh, Runic Echoes being taken out, that AP junglers are struggling a little bit, but uh, that doesn't mean they are not viable. They can still definitely uh, definitely work. We'll see what they decide to do. So see what OU does for bands this time around. Yeah, I'm interested to see where their priority is going to be with these second round bans. Um, are they going to try to pinch out the AD carry pool even more? And it looks like they are. They're really targeting uh, Instant T down there. They're going to push them way back onto some champions that they might not be comfortable with. Yeah, I'm wondering if, it, if they'll pick up Kaylin if they don't ban that away. Uh, it's certainly a possibility. Looks like uh, Michigan is going to be focusing on topside here to try and get a favorable matchup. Um, Oakland does have the final counter pick. They do take out Camille. I know that Shamwow is a, is a very scary Camille player. So I think that is a good ban. Um, and Kale comes off the table. Uh, so we might be seeing perhaps a, a Scion top then? Uh, with the Kale ban? Yeah, I think that would be smart. I, I was kind of surprised uh, University of Michigan put such priority on the Gangplank and Kale bans, because I think it makes more sense for OU to go for an, like a tanky engaged top laner with the Galio. Otherwise, who is Galio really going to try to be ulting in fights? Like, like you know, is someone going to go on Jin or Graves and it's like a defensive ult in that? Or are you really going to try to engage hard and use the Galio ult for engage as well? Um, yeah, and we do see Alistar picked up for uh, Tupac, so that will give at least one aggressive uh, option for Galio. Um, but I agree, I would like to see some sort of uh, beef coming out of the top lane. Fiora. Shen? So we do I see the Shen. Shen pick makes more sense. Yeah, I, I agree. Shen, uh, Shen coming out of top lane gives you that global pressure, can show up to any team fights, um, which is a good counter for, for Galio, who wants to do kind of the same thing. So right. if Galio is going to do it, you can see we have an answer and a Poppy, a Poppy pickup for It's John. Um, this is a new pick, I think, for him. I'm interested to see uh, how it's going to work. Yeah, I think, I think it's a, a decent pick. I think uh, John can 
uh, you know, for an engage, you could like flash, hit it the on a wall, and then you get the Galio engage. And that kind of guarantees that the Galio knockup hits. Um, or vice versa, Alistar can uh, uh, do his uh, engage with his knockup. You get the Galio engage as well. So I think OU has good tools for engage, um, as well as hopefully disengage with that Galio ult. Yeah, and the Poppy, uh, there's like four dashes, I think, on the uh, the side of Michigan. So Poppy is going to have a, an ability to disrupt a bit of that, uh, depending yeah. on how well John can time uh, the, I think it's the Steadfast Presence. I don't remember the name of it, but... Uh, that, that might be the name. All right, um... well, we are moving into our spectator delay. Uh, any last thoughts before we jump into game one? No. All right, then we are going to take a short break, and we will be back when the game begins. Go. All right, welcome to game one of the University of Michigan versus Oakland University in the Evil Geniuses Midwestern uh, Invitational. Uh, we had a, a pretty interesting champ select, uh, seeing some new picks, a Lilia in the jungle, seeing a Poppy in the top lane. Um, I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah, so, I mean, just off the rip, at, uh, at first glance, I think uh, both teams have clear win conditions. Um, I like both comps, to be honest, so we'll have to see uh, who comes out on top here. Yeah, I am interested. They did push uh, Instant T back pretty far onto the, the Lucian. So we'll see, um, you know, how, how he performs there. I know Lucian has fallen out of favor in the mid lane. Um, still, I think, can be an 80 carry. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Good early sweeper coming out from Lucian to find the, uh, the ward. Uh, but that will push him back into his own red. Uh, he will not be trying to steal that blue. Yeah, so they'll know where he's starting, so it'll be interesting to see how well they track him throughout this early game, uh, in terms of looking out for ganks. But that's a very early, uh, E onto the Jin there, from Mexican Thunder. So it looks like pretty standard clears so far. Another E, but interrupted this time by uh, Tupac with the yeah, Alistar. Great, great knockup. And we can see already that uh, U University of Michigan's bot lane is not afraid to, to go in early here. Well, both supports taking a good chunk of damage. Uh, I think I think Alistar has a little bit of built-in sustain. Will probably help him a little more than Leona. So we'll see where this lane goes. Yeah, one thing that is concerning to me is uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned that OU will not have the damage in these extended team fights. Yeah, their their damage is a little more, uh, you know, like consistent. They don't yeah. really have too much of the burst. Right. Which uh, could be difficult in some extended fights, or non-extended fights, really. Although we see John is really bullying him, and he wow. actually gets the first blood solo kill onto Sham. Wow, that's a good start for Oakland. Lilia coming up, though, to see if she can do anything. We do yeah, have the TP great back. solo kill out of it, John. Yeah, I had a little bit of question about the Poppy. Haven't seen him on it before, but... He's showing me right now that it's okay. Healing knows uh, Mushin's right there in case Kali did want to fight that. We are seeing a lot of map movement from uh, out of U of M, just making sure that they're tracking uh, Mushin in the jungle. And now we might be seeing a three-man gank mid Ooh, the E connects way under tower. They do manage to take down Keelan, and there is no response. And, and again, kill goes onto the Akali. It, that is, that is a, a very important kill there, getting Akali rolling early. 
um, and putting Galio down is that's going to be big for uh, Michigan. Now it looks like Keelan's going to miss out on a nice chunk of CS here, and he is going to be down um, quite a bit early on. Yeah, this is definitely not a favorable state to be in for Keelan. Um, but you know, if there's anyone that I trust to uh, to pull it back, it's Keelan. Absolutely. Looks like we're still seeing just, you know, chip shots here and there in bot lane. Nothing uh, too exciting going on. Um, even though Poppy has been bullying this Shen, still down in CS. I'll run and right at him again. All right, we're getting pretty close to the time where we're gonna see some important level sixes starting to come through in Shen and Galio, start to get the global pressure going on both sides. Uh, we'll see how the teams use those. Looks like they once again did spot out Mujin in his own jungle. They have been, uh, Michigan has been doing a fantastic job of tracking him. And I do believe they are trying to sneak out this dragon. Mushin might find them here, but it might be too late. I don't know, Kali's backing, but it might be getting it. There's the TP, they've secured it, and they definitely are taking the early game lead here in terms of dragons. We have a even amount of gold, one to one in kills, but that first dragon's gonna be pretty big. see a quick little engage but you know nothing doing there they back off as a Lilia little seed goes rolling on through and Shen is six so that is something to watch out for now definitely always got to be worried about those uh those Shen alts that can really turn plays around This could be something here for the side of OU. He'll come out from Lucian. Uh, it does look like we have a collapse coming in from Michigan. Will it be enough? The Shen alt channels. The Galio alt follows it up. Akali's now into the fight. So far, we have a two for two. Is Galio going to be able to get out? No, that is a three for two. Four for two. Endrit, can he do it? He does. He Endrit does. stays alive gets the kill onto Akali, that is, that's a big turnaround there. It could have been absolute disaster. Instead, it's just going, you know, slight favor towards Michigan. That did allow Poppy a lot of time alone up top though. And we see built up a good CS lead, got, got himself a, uh, a turret plate there. Let's see if Poppy can really use this, this advantage to bully Shen out even more. Looks like Michigan might be going for a very early Rift Herald here with Leona roaming up. We do yeah. see the, the eight minute Rift Herald pretty often. Um, they are moving in towards mid. Keelan sees him coming and he is able to get out just fine. It's like Tupac might be roaming up here just to uh, be ready for it. Yeah, to counter that pressure, it does look like he is making his way up. Michigan sees it, and they are kind of backing off a little bit. Mushin is making his way up top. See if they can, you know, work on work on that Shen. Poppy has the bomby cinder now. Oh, the taunt is interrupted. The dash does not go through, and oh, the spirit zone. The Spirit Zone stops Grace from getting the kill. Poppy flashes forward for it and finishes it off anyways. Although that did take uh, that did take the flash off of Poppy. Um, that might come back to get them later. 
Yeah, we'll have to see. Shen did spend his flash as well. Should be able to drag it. There we go. You good? You got alt tab and then grab Shoot. whatever you want. What are you trying to grab? Grab this at the top and drag it. Yeah. There you go. Sorry for the uh the technical difficulties for a moment. Just had to uh set up a second monitor here. Um but anyways. Back at the game, we have a pretty even game here at 10 minutes. Just a slightly less than 1K. It's hovering around 5 to 800 for, for Oakland. Um, and we did see the Rift Herald go over to Mushin, which will help make up for the fact that Michigan did get the first dragon. Um, but from here, you know, let's see where, let's see what they fight over next. John Teleport just comes back up, so if there's any sort of fight that goes on here with Lilia sitting in the bot lane, they do have the option to TP as well as with the Galio ult if they chose to roam down. We do and see Lilia, Lilia moving away, far. Man. Yeah. Although in response, we, we get the Herald from Mushin in the mid lane. Good amount of plates here. That's a good injection of gold. Let's see if Michigan can respond. Looks like Michigan's really setting up for this second dragon, really making sure that they want to uh, control these dragons early and set themselves up for a sole point. Kupak forced to burn the Alex Darl. Might be caught out here. And surely yeah. he will go down. I think he went in a little too far there. He does go down, and now I don't think there's really any way Oakland wants to contest this dragon. Either be Cloud or Infernal Soul. Let's see what we end up with here. We get the Cloud Soul. So, Cloud Soul, I think, really is not so bad for either of these teams. Um, no. Having a Shen come flying in with his ult, Lilia putting people to sleep and running around, you know, Akali can always use more speed. Lucian with the, uh, the, um, oh man. The culling, that's what it's called. You know, having a burst of speed there is going to be great. Leona yeah. with the engage. Yeah, it's actually, that's a pretty good squad soul, or a pretty good soul for uh, for Michigan, at least. In my opinion, it is one of the worst souls. I don't know if I'm right on, like, stats-wise, but it always feels less impactful uh. than other souls. I do think that is the general consensus. Uh, it's pretty comp dependent on whether or not it's good. Yeah. Um, but I think this is one of those times where Michigan, you know, they don't mind getting a Cloud Soul here. All right, we see Mujin jumping on to uh, Instant T here. Oh, the Shen ult is able to keep him alive and it, they turn it around. Alistar's going in. Doesn't have the damage to finish him. Poppy TP. Will the Poppy TP play be enough? We do see a lot coming down. The Cullen comes out, but it's not enough to save him. Can they get Instant T out? Oh, he bends it around Leona. He manages to hit him once, but not enough. This is a big poppy, 3-0. Oh. Yeah, 3-0 and oh on the poppy right now is, is looking pretty good. Um, although Shen has also been able to get, uh, you know, quite a bit of, uh, you know, impact himself with that global ult. Uh, we yeah. have some supports running into each other here. Oh, pushes him over oh. the wall. Forces the flash. Okay, Tupac. Well played. All right, so we have a few minutes till the next major objective's coming up. Um, as we did just, did we see Rift Herald go over? We did not. So Rift Herald has not gone back over yet. Um, 
that'll come up in about a minute 20. Two minutes till Dragon, so we'll see where these teams decide to fight if they do. Quite stacked up heavy here on the uh, top side of the map. Looks like all five members are heading up there for this Rift Herald. Uh, and I gotta say, go lane. yeah, Poppy has not just gotten a CS lead and a kill lead, Poppy's up two levels on Shen right now. Nice disengage coming out. He goes back in, but the exhaust is going to scare him off. And that's that's the thing with the Kali. You never know if they're done going in. One of the stickiest champions out there. Kali will have no ult for this Rift Herald, though, so there's a little bit of a window for... And it looks oh, like he was going in, but sees the rest of Michigan here. And we see the, uh, the Lilia ult is out, and Michigan is starting to run over this fight. Although here it comes to re-engage. Pick picks up two in return. They're not done yet. Yeah, and they're able to get the Shen ult, but still kill off, uh, I believe it was Akali. So Shen is stuck in the bot lane. This Poppy is really doing work. And as you said, Jin Endrit picks up a couple kills in that fight, and he's quietly 4-0-2 right now. He's also looking pretty big. I agree. So it looks like OU is interested in contesting this third dragon. They do not want to allow Michigan to get that early soul point. Yeah, the Cloud Drakes will be good too. The ultimate cooldown or the abil ability haste, as it's called now, will be good on Shen. Right, ability Kali. haste. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, all of them have very good ultimates that would be for so. So that's something I haven't thought of. Have they changed Cloud Drake so that it says ultimate ability haste, or does it still say ultimate cooldown? It says ultimate ability haste. Okay. All right, looks like we do see Mujin starting up the dragon solo. Uh, that control ward is not in range, so Michigan sees him doing this, and they're going to go towards the Rift Herald in response. Oakland sniffs this out, though, and they are at least contesting, hoping to get both Poppy and Graves up there in time. And it looks like Michigan is forced to back off. Oakland is able to grab that turret for their first turn of the game, actually. Yeah, it's 17 minutes. Uh-oh, we see Akali might be in a bad spot here with most of Oakland uh, making their way up. Jin hits the long-range snipe. Can Akali pull it back? Doesn't look like it. Endrit picks up another kill. The second game now, Endrit looked very good on this Jin. Absolutely. Even though the game didn't go well for Oakland, uh, game one, entered on the Jin still did plenty well enough. And now with that focus topside, it looks like we're going to have uh, Oakland move into the Rift Herald here and end up getting that back for themselves. We still see this is a neck and neck game. Less than 500 gold difference at 18 minutes. Two dragons to one, one tower to one, eight to nine kills. This is a game. We've got one going here. Yeah, so I really feel like either uh, either of these mid game fights here could go either way. I think uh, champion wise, in terms of scaling, uh, the Team, both teams are pretty evenly matched. Yeah, we have some global pressure uh, on both teams with the Shen and the Galio. You know, we have some scaling here and there, and some champions that don't scale as well, but on both sides, I really think these mid-game fights are going to come down to just who executes the fight better. Yeah. And we actually see both AD carries... Speaking of Endrit, you know, quietly getting ahead, we also see Instant T, 3-0-4 for himself on Lucian. Same uh, same amount of kill participation. 
it might just come down to the, who can keep their AD carry alive longer. Yeah, absolutely. And no real team has, like, I don't want to say that, but they don't have, like, ins now the team has, like, insane backline dive, except for maybe Akali. Um, and so I, I feel like it's going to be a big uh, front-to-back uh, kind of team fight where whichever front line can stay alive longer. And like we've talked about before, it is a big copy, but I'm the Oh, he here. tries to flash the, the ground pound, doesn't get it. And they are able, oh, are they gonna get it? They do get Shen right at the edge there. Mushin you know, picked up his first kill of the game. Mushin does get his first kill. And you know what they say, if you've got problems with globals, you attack the globals. So they're taking it to Shen so that he can't, you know, help out in the fight in any way. And It's John does a fantastic job of holding off the top lane on his own. Michigan wanted to do something, but, you know, their hesitation has allowed uh, Oakland to get a Rift Herald charge off in the mid tower. They don't stick around to finish it off, but that is a lot of damage. All right, we have the next Cloud Drake coming up in one minute. Uh, I imagine both teams are going to want this because Michigan, again, it'll put them at sole point, and Oakland's got to gotta try to keep them away from that. Who's Who's got the better team fight coming in in the next minute? Bit of a wet noodle fight in the top lane. <laughs> Uh, I do think it is important now that John gets as much damage down onto Shen right now as he can, so that if Shen does manage to alt in to the uh, the ensuing team fight, that he's coming in a bit weaker. Right. Although it looks like it's John is gonna just make his way down now, try to uh, beat Shen there just by walking. Mushin is kind of pushing John Star off a bit. They're engaging on the Lilia. Will it be enough? Well, the Shen ult oh, keeps him alive just long enough for Shen to come through. Mushin caught out of position. Oakland wins the fight big. Akali on the back line looking for something, but going to be chased out by Keelan. Oakland coming up with the big fight in Michigan's jungle. That is dragon number two, and that's gotta be feeling pretty good. All right, for the first time, we actually see one team kind of pulling away a little bit. Oakland is finally over 1,000 gold in the lead, about 12 to 1,400. And that's, I think, the biggest lead we've seen all 23 minutes of the game. Yeah. Yeah, really neck and neck. This is sure to be a good series. We see the scuttle fight. John Star really is able to is able to get in there real quick and nab that one. So talked earlier about you know Michigan's uh, you know ultimates in in Cloud Soul. We take a look at uh at OU side, you know, not not too bad either. You know, Jin obviously not too helpful there, but a Galio alt with some movement speed, Graves alt with some movement speed, Alistar with some movement right. speed. We got we got some good use for it on that side as well. Yeah. Does look like OU is going to secure themselves another tower. All three outer towers are now down for the side of Michigan, uh, while OU still has their mid outer. And I was concerned at the beginning of the game that OU wasn't going to have the damage to run through this team, but I think Andrew has been putting out more than enough damage. 
Yeah, Endrit has been scary so far. This Jin has been absolutely popping people. All right, as we move into this mid game, we're seeing the teams try to set up around objectives, but no one's really too far ahead that they want to start them yet. So we're kind of playing a little bit of vision tug of war here. Let's see who comes out on top of this one. A little bit of a 3-1-3 right now coming out from OEU, as well yep, as Michigan. Oh, Shen goes in, but Keelan is able to respond pretty well. And now we have Oakland collapsing. Will they get to him in time? The Proto Belt with the taunt is enough. Can they finish him? He flashes out the Jin root oh, from downtown. Endrith. From downtown, Endrit. What a shot! Able to secure the kill for his team. Endred is absolutely carrying it this game. All right, we do see Michigan invade uh, OU's red side. You know, stealing away some jungle camps to try and make up for the uh, the loss of Shen. So they're, you know, they're still staying pretty even, although Oakland has grown this to a almost a 2K gold lead now. Uh, that's good news if you're Oakland. The lead is slowly growing. Yes, and if you are University of Michigan, it's not, it's not insurmountable. You know, you can, you can definitely swing things around from a 2K gold lead at this point in the game. Right, especially with, you know, just a clutch uh, Shen ult or, you know, a pick on somebody, and immediately that can be turned around. And look at the bounties on the side of OEU versus there's none on the University of Michigan. And so if one team fight does go the way of University of Michigan, this fight's, I mean, it could go either way. It really could. All right, looks like we're getting some action around this uh, this next Drake. Whoever takes this will be at Soul Point. Both teams have got to want that. Endrick going in, or not Endrick, Tupac, sorry. Endrick's actually fighting for his life on the back line. They do take him do. down. But what, at the cost of what though? At the cost of possibly it looks team. like everything. Yeah. Can they finish off instant T? They're chasing. Will Galio get to him? The Proto Belt into the Winds of War is enough. That is an ace coming out from the side of Oakland. They take down Endrit, get the shutdown on Poppy and uh, Jin, but they lose all five members, and now Oakland is at sole point. So, I mean, if you're... If you're rooting for Michigan right now, and you look at that, I mean, how much better of a fight could you really ask for? You take out Jin right away. Your Lucian is the last one that gets the uh, last one that gets killed. He's free firing the whole time, and you still lose the fight. So not not looking too good for Michigan right now. Right, that is a little bit worrying. That seemed like at the start that it was an awesome fight for Michigan, but OU is able to just you know make it a delayed fight, keep themselves alive. Uh, Jin goes down early, but it take for or it took, sorry, took forever for a Poppy to go down. It's so crazy. I forgot how to speak for a second, and uh, they're able to just uh, extend the fight and and win the the longer fight. It was a little bit of a Thanos meme, you know, like you took down Jin, but at what cost? You <laughs> well, know? At what, cost? What, did, what did it cost you? It cost you everything. Now let's see if Oakland can use this to uh, perhaps set up a Baron. Uh, in the next few minutes or, or push down another tower or two. Um, it's great that they're in the lead, but we do have to see them close this out. Looks like once again, they're taking the fight to Shen. Shen can't get out if he's got no one to, you know, he can't alt himself. Heading the, <laughs> heading the wrong way, sir. 
and drip. Man, awesome. that's a tank, and they just blew him up in about a quarter second. Will they try to transition this into Baron? The pings seem to say so. Are they gonna be able to do it? Michigan does have vision of their jungle. So they don't have to face check too hard. We do see Keelan waiting on the uh, the wings here. Gonna try to get a good uh, good taunt on anyone who attempts to, you know, stop the Baron. And they're going in. Tupac goes in with the Galio wall. This is looking like a great fight for Oakland. Are they gonna be able to finish off Lucian? Doesn't seem like it. On the back Akali's line, on we side. do see the Akali. All of a sudden, not looking good for OU. Triple kill on the Lucian. Akali in the back line. And Jin is the sole surviving member. Yeah, Michigan's able to extend that fight, keep Leona and Lucian alive, while Akali just comes in from the back line and, you know, wreaks havoc on the squishier members. Michigan does a fantastic job of turning what looked like a lost fight around and be pulling the game back to less than a 1,000 gold lead. And I think that all just goes down to the Akali providing that pressure, not allowing Endrit to move up with the rest of the team. Um, and the rest of the team not paying attention to where Akali was um, and feeling for Endrit. Right, going a little too, uh, little too hard towards Lucian there. Uh, kind of tunnel visioned a bit and allowed Akali to sneak into the back line and kind of clean up the fight. Uh-oh, Tupac a little out of position. He does have his team out of the way. Will he be able to make it out? They do leave him be for the time being. Looks like we are setting up vision for this uh, this Cloud Drake here. That would be four Cloud Drakes and a Cloud Soul for Oakland if they do manage to take this one. All right, we do see Michigan kind of taking priority over the mid lane. Let's see how Oakland responds. And this has got me tense. I'm nervous. Yeah, after that last fight, you know, you're not you're not sure which way it's gonna go. Leona Alt comes down. Shentaunt interrupted by Poppy. And now we have a front-to-back team fight with the tanks of both sides being left out to dry. Shen does escape, but Alistar unfortunately does not. Here, Kali's backing. She is gonna TP back though. She's Lily got picked out line. a little bit. Here comes a Kali. They can't seem to do anything here. They do put the sleep down onto Poppy, but it doesn't do anything. As Shen goes in and dies immediately, they catch out a Kali. That is huge. Endred Finish off Leona. Here. Endred on the triple. Endred. On the Endred. Endrit with the Quadra! The Penta kill! He got all five! Endrit is taking care of business here in game one. The Penta kill! That's gotta feel good. Leads to the Cloud Soul, potentially a Baron, and suddenly OU is back up 3k again! I think it was huge that they were able to, to pick out that Akali so early in the fight, because as soon as Akali goes down, there's really no assassin threat onto Jin anymore. And right. like you she, said, he just got to free fire. She had no she had no ultimate, and they they have no one else to dive the back line except for Akali, and if no one's back there, there's just too many BP frontliners for OU that Jin's just gonna free fire all day. And he's got himself the IE, he's got his Eclipse item, his Mythic item, he's got the Collector, 
which when enemies are at 5% or below, it automatically executes them. And then he's got his rapid fire cannon. He's on his last item, which I'd imagine is going to be a GA. He's got 60% crit. I mean, he's just, he's just massive. He is a monster at this point. Unfortunately, the Cloud Soul, you know, he's probably the only person in the game who does not benefit from uh, the active part. But, you know, having your ultimate up on cooldown faster is probably not a bad thing. No, he, he's he's used it very well in team play so far. All right, we do see with Baron, OU is just going to run it right down mid lane and take this middle inhibitor. And this will set them up nicely for objectives, you know, in the next couple of minutes. We do see a little bit of a little bit of a macro hiccup as the other two lanes, top and bottom, are very pushed out for Michigan, which means that uh, OU is not going to be able to take advantage of the other lanes for a little bit of time. But they did get that mid inhib, which is which is a pretty big deal. U of M doing a nice job of pushing out that mid lane, keeping the minions back uh, as Oakland is trying to get the bot lane to uh, to push in. So Michigan doing a pretty good job of controlling waves here and uh, kind of stopping the Baron power play a little bit. Yeah, and gold is only 5k apart, which at this stage of the game, you know, not, not, uh, not insurmountable. Because the later it goes, the more gold doesn't matter. Right, the later we go, the more full build everyone gets. Gold starts to matter less and less. Uh, we did have an interesting kind of little skirmish there. It looked like both supports were just going to walk by one another and then decided last second to actually hit one another. All right. OU has this big wave they've been building up. Let's see if they can use it to push down this turret while they still have uh, Baron going. They don't quite get it all the way down, but, oh, they still have one cannon left. Can they keep the cannon alive long enough? It's gonna be close. And the Winions coming in clutch, able to take down that tower. And now Michigan's gotta back off a little bit. Here comes the Endrit ult. Just using Her it, this is, uh, yeah, this is a zoning ult. Allows his team to get the, uh, the rest of the uh, inhibitor there. Not a bad play. All right, we have a reset coming out. Two minutes on Elder, two and a half on Baron. Let's see. Uh, let's see where Oakland places priority here. Uh, they do have, you know, the gold lead. They do have the tempo. So Michigan is going to have to match where Oakland wants to play right now. And Jin is still sitting on his stopwatch, and he has his cleanse, and his flash will probably be up before the next fight, so chances are he'll get to survive against the Sakali. And then after that, he just left the free fire again. Right, it, it seems to me that if Oakland can take care of Akali, stop that backline assassination, Jin is just gonna start absolutely popping people. We do see we got four men in the top lane. This is that 4-1 we saw again in all three games, I think, against Northwood. But this time we have Poppy in the mid lane. We have uh, John instead of Keelan. We do see Shen Botside trying his best to keep waves pushed out. Is it going to be enough? Looks like Oakland's just going to run through this tower. Ollie goes in, but she stops. By they the steadfast presence. Yeah, they tried the uh, the Akali submarine with Shen, but that poppy pick coming in clutch again. And I mean, that just shut down their engage. Yeah, immediately their engage is over. They they kind of have to wait, and they they blew that Shen ultimate and Akali yeah. ultimate. Those are two Akali. huge team fight cooldowns. The Akali ultimate I think will be up before before drag, but the Shen ult I'm almost positive will not. 
Looks like Oakland's setting up, you know, the brush of death here, waiting for Mission to come looking. They do see Torin here. Tupac, sorry. Engage on to Poppy. But in goes Alistar. Three-man knockup into the Galio ult. This is a great engage so far. Akali goes down. We see Jin free firing on the back. He's kind of stuck out of the fight a little bit. Flashes in. Pulling up the ultimate. Lucian's going to escape. Comes back for Mushin. Oh, the flash engage coming out. Endrit with the triple kill. This might just be the game. Yeah, I think this is going to be the game. I don't think Lilia can hold here. They've got a fat wave in the bot lane with what looks like three or four super minions. And that's Marcus it. Two. Game one is going to go the way of Oakland University. Uh, this is a, a great win here. A close game throughout the first 25 minutes. Oakland got, you know, a little bit ahead. U of M pulled it back. But Oakland is able to close out the game off the back of a, a great poppy pick and an absolutely amazing performance by Edrit on the gin. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that was an exciting game one. Hopefully we have just as exciting of a game two. Of course, Oakland coming out on top of that one too, we hope for. Uh, it's a 1-0 series lead for Oakland, and we will be back in a few minutes. Right, this is the first time all day. All right. All right, we are back into champion select for game number two, Oakland University versus University of Michigan in the Evil Geniuses Midwestern Invitational. Um, pretty excited here. A good, well-fought game one. OU comes out on top off the back of a good poppy pick in an amazing performance out of uh, Endrit on that gin. So yeah. let's see yeah, what great. we got for picking bands here. Yeah, great game one. Seeing uh, the same bands uh, and picks come out on both sides. Right, we do see the Ash and Samira and Draven, all three AD carries taken away again. And the first pick, Jin, comes out, even with Graves still on the table. Um, Endred's got to be feeling good. He says, give it to me again. I'll, I'll do it again. The Zoe hover, but the last second switch to Leona, locking that back in. And this time we have a Jarvin coming out of the jungle. That's that kind of, I think, that engage that University of Michigan might have been lacking last time. Jarvin's definitely going to give him more of that. Yeah, and then with the Cataclysm, too, it'll it'll be able to lock down Jin into a really confined area so he can't kite with that movement speed that he gets from his crits. Exactly. Jin, without any, uh, you know, movement abilities, that Cataclysm lands on him. He's either got a flash or walk in circles. Now, what if Jin builds that new item as a Gale Force? Does that let you hop over walls or no? That is a fantastic question that I do not know the answer to. Because <laughs> Maybe somebody so in chat can help us out with that. Yeah, maybe Quang will know our stats guy. Yeah, we'll, we'll put Quang on that one. That's up to him to figure out. Um, and so far, you know, on Oakland side, we've got the we've got the salty run back. We've got the whole first oh, three yeah. picks again. And we do get the Zoe pickup on the side of Michigan. So they are looking, you know, for a big, heavy AP mid laner this time. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, and they ban out the Fizz, which is smart because he would be able to just, Zoe R's forward and Fizz just throws his fish right where she's going to come back to and... Uh, <laughs> it's impossible to dodge. <laughs> yeah, spells bad news for Zoe. All right, and they are taking away that Galio that, that was so great in those team fights. 
you know, provided a lot of space for uh, Jin to just free fire. So looks like they're, you know, they're kind of clamping down on, on some of the picks. And the response is, we don't have a global, you don't get a global, Shen is going to be banned away as well. Yeah, I really hope to see, uh, I, I think Keelan could play just about whatever he wants here. Um, but I'd really like to see John again go back onto that uh, beefy front line, uh, just because Endred's shown twice today uh, that he can perform on this gen and that he's capable of carrying on it. So uh, I'd like to see him just trust in his ADC that he can uh, just play something that can peel and engage and let Endred take over. Yeah, and it looks like we're going back to that poppy. Um, it is a poppy blind this time, uh, assuming that Jarvan is going in the jungle uh, and that Zoe's going to be mid. Those would be some pretty crazy uh, flexes otherwise, but uh, we do, we will see that poppy again. Um, although this time we have Kaisa on the other side and Keelan's gonna pull out the Victor. This is a pick that uh, we've been pretty excited about this past couple days. Uh, Victor seems like a pretty strong champion right now. And it looks like we're gonna get Oh, not the Aatrox. Perhaps a Trundle here. All right, we'll get the Gangplank. So Poppy will not get that same value out of the uh, Steadfast Presence. Uh, it'll be good for, for Kaisa, Leona, and Jarvan. Um, but, you know, not, not so much for his actual lane this time. Maybe maybe we won't see a solo kill from John today. Or not today, but this game. Uh, I uh, I thought Trundle would have been a pretty good pick there. Yeah, Trundle would have had some pretty beefy targets. The Alistar and the and the Poppy um, can slow down Jin. I do like the idea of Trundle, but uh, Michigan decides they want to go with the the Gangplank, and you know again with that kind of global presence, uh, and we'll see how how it works for him. I am excited to see this Victor. Um, you know, Keelan's been talking about how strong he thinks it is uh, with these new items and the, the changes made to him. And I'm excited to see if he can really pull out, you know, a, a fantastic performance here. Yeah, I think both teams uh, look great. So why don't we uh, get this game going and uh, we'll see who comes out on top of game two. Yeah, uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple minutes for game two here. Um, see you in a few. All right, we are back for game two of Oakland University versus the University of Michigan at the Evil Geniuses Midwest Invitational. Oakland with a, a great hard fought game one come out on top. Uh, and here we are in game two. This is a best of three series. So if Oakland manages to take this game, they will move on to the semifinals tomorrow. Uh, if Michigan wins, we're going to a game three. Right, and Tupac doing the same thing once again where he checks uh, that lane brush, sits up really far in there. I think just to make sure maybe they're not wrapping around to go into river? Uh, protecting to... protecting the blue maybe? Oh, up, uh, I see, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong spot. Yeah, so I, I think he's just making sure they're not gonna try to cheese them as they walk into lane uh, okay. with the, like a surprise Leona Q, um, especially yeah. since Kaisa gets the extra damage with CC. Right. Um, so maybe just some cheese prevention. Uh, we do have double cleanse coming out on the side of Oakland as well. Uh, a lot of things that they're gonna wanna cleanse out of, especially Zoe Bubble and, you know, Leona are. Yeah. So Andrew might be in some trouble this game with that uh, Jarvan Cataclysm locking him down and then the GP ult on top of that. We saw how much damage It's John did to uh, the enemy. Was it? A no, it was. Uh, the Shen? No. Uh, Akali? Nope. John. Lilia. They were all. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go through all of them. Game two. Game two versus Northwood. 
John. Oh, Northwood. Okay. Yeah, John was on GP and he was ulting uh, the ADC. Who was ADC that game though? Uh, Tristana. That was the Tristana game. Right. Right. So, uh, saw how much damage it's John's GP ultimate did to that Tristana. Um, same situation here can happen to Endrit, and Endrit doesn't have a jump like Tristana to get away from the Cataclysm and the GP ult. So, could be pretty disastrous here for Endrit. We'll see how he plays around that. Yeah, definitely. Being in a mobile AD carry is going to make things more difficult. That GP slow is going to be a killer. That Cataclysm is going to, you know, prevent him from going anywhere. So... All Jin has is that five minute flash timer. That, that's about it. I've been seeing a. Oh, looks like we might have a mid lane, mid lane visit here from uh, Graves. Mushin is going for it. Does not have flash. Opted for the ignite, ignite smite. So cannot follow the Zoe flash, but. That was Zoe's real flash, and that is going to be helpful uh, in case he wants to come back. Yeah, really good. Um, you see that Zoe is also teleported back, so that is both summoners down for uh, Clifton Beefy there in the mid lane. Lucian is sticking around, looking like he wants to say hello again, but Zoe just kind of cheats back towards her jungler, and Jarvan is now in the midst, and I don't think... Oh, are we going to have a 2v2 here? No, both sides just kind of agree to let it go. So not too much action so far in this early game. A couple skirmishes here and there, a gank to blow a flash, but uh, much like game one, this, this game is off to a fairly steady start. Yeah. Although we do see Jarvan coming down right as Alistar goes in. That might be some bad timing. Is Jin able to escape? No, the flash Q. The exhaust to slow the Jarvan, and he makes it out! However, he goes down himself. He was not able to get himself out of there. Very good by uh, OU's bot lane. Oh! The oh, Zoe the runs surprise. down from the side. Oh, that's gotta feel bad. Michigan off to a very, very different start than game... Uh, just as I was saying, it was looking the same. Uh... U of M takes a, a pretty commanding lead in the bot lane there. Taking out both Endrit and Tupac. This does not seem like a very fun matchup for it, John. Uh, no, it does not. <laughs> Michigan able to go into the dragon from their uh, their bot lane pressure. Can Mushin respond on the top side and help out uh, John here? Here he comes, gets some damage down, not enough. Gangplank just walks right on out. Uh, I thought it was interesting that GP bought a tier. Because that only builds into Mira Mana, correct? Um, that or Seraphs, and I don't imagine he'll be going for a Seraphs, so... Yeah. Looks like we will see Mana Immune. Uh, yeah, and there's the Sheen pickup, too. That is an interesting buy. Um, we're gonna see how that one goes. Things have quieted down a little bit now that we had our bot lane action. And while uh, while Mushin was uh, in the top lane, U of M did take the Ocean Dragon. Right, they were able to uh, to transition from that that double kill bot lane right up into the dragon, and uh, Mushin didn't get anything on the other side. There was no no good answer to that. So. We're gonna see how that, uh, you know, kind of impacts the next couple minutes here.
You do see some deep vision placed by Gangplank there, getting a deep control ward. Uh, it, it is pinged out, so it does seem like Oakland knows it's there. And they cleared out right there just fine. Playing some mind games in that bush there. Just daring him to come up. We do see Zoe. No, just moving down, but only threatening. All right, we do see quite a CS lead being built up here for instant T on this Kai'Sa. 25 up right now on uh, on Jin. Not quite the same start to the game that we had last time for him. And it looks like they might be getting another visit from both Zoe and Jarvin here. Like... Leona's in trouble here. J4, Q EQ's in. And Leona stays alive with the stopwatch. Excellent dive. Oh, 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 oh my <laughs> goodness, she barely lived. Excellent dive by U of M. Uh, yeah, they're just... Stopwatch by Leona. Yeah, they're just bullying, you know. They're just bullying bot lane right now. They said, okay, Endrit was the win condition last game. Well, let's try and stop him, put him down early this game. Uh, we do see another attempted response at a dive top, but did not work out quite as nicely. Uh, ShamWow's doing just fine. Yeah, GP's gonna make that. Oh, the bubble from downtown. Clinton Beefy is gonna pick that. Clifton Beefy, excuse me, is gonna pick that one up. And now they're gonna move on to Mucin. And GP is gonna take that with the plunder. And this is quickly turning into, you know, quite a lead for U of M. Very different from last game. They're up 3k gold now at just about 10 minutes. I don't think we saw someone with a 3k gold lead until about 30 minutes last game. Yeah. Oh, oh he's gonna try to answer back here. The Kaisa shield does seem to be enough to keep her alive. The flash out of the Cataclysm, but the follow EQ, they don't finish off Endrit. Is he gonna be able to do it? Curtain call's gonna open up. First bolt's gonna land, second. Oh! oh almost onto the Kaisa. A fantastic attempt there to get the Kaisa by pushing Jarvin out of the way, but it just wasn't enough. Now, does Victor not have a starting item anymore? No, I think they've changed it to where, uh, I believe he just gets bonuses from having mythic items. Um, Although that might be Orn. But I do not believe he has the uh, required starting item anymore. All right, so we're seeing a strong early game from U of M here this time. Um, so while they're taking the lead in the early game, can they transition that into mid? Or will Oakland be able to, you know, kind of claw things back a bit? We do see that they have the Rift Herald. Uh, Mushin has been sitting on that for a while now. Although, here comes Zoe. Maybe another gank. Nope, they're just gonna let it be. And easy, no contested second Drake. Now, we did see excellent uh, drag control from U of M uh, last game. But after, it led to four uncontested Cloud Drakes for OU. That is true. They did take the first two dragons last time. But uh, OU was able to fight back in that mid game. And, you know, like you said, four uncontested Drakes. Uh oh. Turning it around a little bit. He's no. definitely first going to land on the Kaisa. I'm just going to use it to disengage. Uh, we do have an Infernal Soul this time. Everybody's favorite. Everyone likes to see the big numbers. Rift Herald mid gets a couple plates. 
Jarvan is not going to be able to, you know, do anything, so they're just going to let the tower kill the minions and back off. Uh, we do see a red steel coming in here, as Nushin is thinking about the same thing on the other side, I believe. Uh, so we'll see uh, if he sticks around for that. And we do see four members of U of M coming down towards the bot lane once again. And this time, Endrit and Tupac say, yeah, we're just going to get out of here. You can take that one. You know, Meanwhile, well, top, lane. Back in the top lane. Are they going to pick it up? And Poppy's going to flash forward. And Mushin is going to pick it up. I was going to say, I'm not quite sure what happened, but we do see a one-for-one one trade, and that is not what you want on the side of Oakland. You know, you're you're doing a, a response play to this bot lane tower going down. You want to get that kill so you can turn around and take a tower of your own. So great job by ShamWow to, you know, delay his death and take one down with him. Yeah. And we do see first tower of the game does go to the side of Michigan. Uh, and they've got a pretty healthy four, four and a half thousand gold lead right now at 14 minutes as the plates are falling. Looks like we do have uh, Mushin and Tupac heading up towards the uh, the top side of the map, perhaps looking to, you know, secure themselves a second Rift Herald. But that is going to leave Endred all alone down here in the bot lane, and I don't know if he can handle a Gangplank on his own. All right, Vision being set up and contested by both teams here at the Rift Herald. We do see Oakland kind of running in. Are they going to do it? Healing Stun it. against the wall. Oh! They get out and they turn the fight. Jarvin stays alive. Oh, if Jarvin goes down, I think that fight goes 100% the other way. Gangplank with a good TP to, to get up there and help turn that fight. And now we see Michigan setting up their vision and invading into Oakland's jungle. They're not done yet. They're looking for Mushin. And he is not getting out of this one. No, no, he is not. They had just seen him use his dash, so they knew it wasn't up. They dropped the Cataclysm on him, and all he can do is watch. That will surely spell Rift Herald for the side of Michigan. Ender can use a deadly flourish to get out once again. He's been pretty on point with those to, to get himself out of some situations, but unfortunately, you know, there have been too many situations for the rest of his team. Yeah, this one looking disastrous for OU, but I've seen comebacks before, and I believe. Definitely, and if we do look at scaling, I mean, Victor and Jin are, are pretty scary, but so are Gangplank and Kaisa, so. Exactly, yep. I'm not sure if scaling heavily favors one side or the other, uh, we do see the third dragon has spawned. Michigan is already ready for it. Um, if they can get this, that will put them at soul point at like 17 minutes. That's scary. Mm -hmm. Although they are backing off and they're going to engage on mid instead. Tupac, Tupac caught in out. Part of town. Might be able to get out though. Does seem to uh, does seem to get himself out of there. Another Deadly Flourish hits. Although Victor's been found on the side. That's gonna hurt. Looks 
So Michigan able to take that fight pretty cleanly. That's going to put them up for sole point. And, you know, they're not out of it, but this is looking like a real tough one for OU. Curtain call does force the flash out of Gangplank. Oh, but U of M is just going to march right down mid lane with that Rift Herald. They're not really afraid of uh, Oakland at the moment. No, I mean, this Kaisa's 5-0. and oh. I mean, up 52 CS. Zoe's up 33 CS. 2-0. and oh. I mean, just bounties across the board. Oh, have they caught out Zoe? They do, but the shutdown goes to Tupac. Not who you want that on. Unfortunate. Just a series of unfortunate events for OU. It does seem to be that way. Leona with the fancy feet, yeah. dodging all over the place. GP's still pushing on that tier two, but Tupac's gonna engage, take Leona to the back. But no oh, to follow great up. ultimate from off. Leona. Kaisa gets out. They don't manage to finish off Leona. That's a tough one. They're looking for plays, but they're just not coming through. I think OU just doesn't have the damage yet compared to what the other team can dish out and how tanky they are with how ahead they are. Yeah, getting those tank stats early onto the, uh, the Jarvan. Is, is definitely allowing him to stay alive. And especially Leona with the bombies too. You know, Leona is, is also pretty tanky at the moment. And like you said, they're, they're behind bot lane and they just don't have the damage yet. Question is, will they get it in time? Or is the game gonna be too far gone at that point? Drags up in three minutes. Clearing out some vision before. Yeah, they are starting to reclaim their bot side a little bit. Um, we can see there aren't any Michigan Wars there. They've got them all set up in the top side, perhaps looking for a Baron for Dragon trade here. We do see Jarvan laying in wait here. Jarvan and Kaisa are looking to pick out any unfortunate member, but Oakland is uh, staying far away. Uh-oh, Mushin might get... Oh, he gets baited by the control ward. The, in oh. the bottom lane, GP solo kills Victor. Yeah, we also see the, the bottom lane solo. Now Poppy's on the wrong side of the rift. And uh, it's just... It's not looking good for Oakland this game. And this will surely... Mm -hmm be barren yeah and michigan coming back strong in game two saying okay game one was you know slow hard fought and you know, he just eked us out in the end but not this time we're gonna take command right away and we're gonna finish this one and they're gonna take the baron and then they're gonna have enough time to reset and be ready for soul yeah it seems like it baron goes down and they've still got a minute 20 i think you're exactly right Right, now we see, looks like U of M is coming right back towards the middle here. You know, they've got the Baron buff. They're just gonna try to rush it down, get a little bit of priority so that they can get their deep wards in and make sure that Oakland has no chance of contesting this. Ooh, sleep on the gym. Poppy's gonna body block, but Kaisa's gonna R in and take the kill. The R in off of the sleepy trouble bubble. Jarvan with the Cavs is gonna lock up Tupac. Tupac's gonna go down, double kill for instance. T, and they're gonna take the second tier mid turret. And I don't think they're stopping there. They look like they want more. Jarvan with a flash combo in. 
Kaisa picks up, goes legendary. She wants more, she's chasing in. Zoe with the flash sleep, Kaisa still raining down fire and gets the double kill to go focus on the mid lane in her inhibitor turret. That is right, they get the inhibitor turret, they get the inhibitor, and this whole time, Gangplank's just been ushering in that bot wave. So they're gonna take bot lane too. This is a, ooh, this is a big one right now. 14, 13 and a half thousand. They're about to pick up Infernal Soul. They just took two inhibitors with that Baron. I don't know how much more Oakland can do here. This might just be a, a go next kind of game. Yeah, I agree. I. I don't see Michigan making the mistakes needed to claw your way back into this one. I think even if you steal the Elder Drake in five minutes, I don't even think it matters. It's just, or six minutes. I don't even think it matters. Oh, Zoe finds the bubble on the poppy. Uh, nothing doing there. Well, let's see if, uh... If Michigan's gonna give it one more last, you know, push down middle or top lane, I guess that's where the last inhibitor is, and you know, see if they can close this one out pretty quickly. We do see Tupac hiding in the lane bush, trying to see if he can find someone a little unprepared. They do find Zoe. Got the barrier, locked up against the wall with Poppy, but Mushin is instantly taken out by Kaisa. Kaisa on the double kill, Kaisa on the triple kill. And they can't even finish off that Zoe. They just don't have the money, they don't have the items, they don't have the damage. And Michigan's just gonna walk this one into the Nexus. Kaisa 14 and 0. Yeah, uh, Instant T is saying, okay, Endrit, I saw you at a pop-off game. It's my turn. Exactly. <laughs> Coming out with a 14 and 0, Kaisa. Oh, and we're not even done yet. We're still padding the stats. Although Kaisa does go down, Mushin does manage to take out Kaisa there. And oh, oh, Michigan's retreating a little bit. Yeah, you said we may oh. see 14k down, 15k down, but we are not going down silently. They do put up a fight at the Nexus, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough. And Michigan is just slowly but surely padding their stats. Oh, we get another kill for, or a kill for Endert there. But that is game two in the books. A dominating win for Michigan, you know, throughout the entire game. All right, well, we will be back with game three. Winner take all moves on to semifinals tomorrow. Uh, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Stay tuned. All right, here we are in Champion Select for game number three. This is it for all the marbles to move on to semifinals tomorrow, uh, where they were, whoever the winner is here will play against uh, Illinois State University uh, in the semis. So this is it. Uh, looks like we're seeing the same kind of bands here. Uh, although the Jin ban has come out on the side of Michigan. Um, they said, we've seen enough of Endred on that. So here we go into the first set of picks. Wonder if OU's gonna answer back with the Ash here. Uh, they might, but I think Samira is the play into Ash. So yeah. they might feel like they'd be counter picking themselves. Right, let's, right. Although Ash is still strong, but let's see if they come up with a, a different pick here. I'm kind of curious as to what they might do. You know, I think that's a good pick. So they're removing the Leona possibility from Samira, which is definitely a good pickup. Because, um, you know, when, when Samira comes up, you know they need some sort of heavy CC uh, support. 
So getting rid of Leona, which uh, Mexican Thunder has been doing really well on, you know, that's that's a good idea. And we see the Graves pick up again from Mushin. Now I'm curious if they if they'll pick up their support here or if they'll they'll allow OU to kind of you know maybe ban some out. Do you see Gragas? Okay. And there's the Alistar, that beefy Oh, Thresh. Thresh still with a lot of CC. So So far, uh you know, looking pretty good on the side of Michigan. And it looks like OU does want to respond with the Ash. Um, I believe it was against Northwood earlier when we saw uh, Endrit Ash into uh, Samira, and man, did it feel bad to watch all those arrows just get swallowed up. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Um... I'm wondering where this Grog is. Is going to be a Gragas top or a Gragas jungle? Or, I mean, it could be a mid, too, honestly. Yeah, you know, and, and it looks like uh, Oakland saying, okay, that might not be, you know, that, that might be jungle, might not be top, but, you know, we'll see. And the Poppy band coming out, respect for the Poppy. Uh, they don't want their engages being shut down this time. Uh, I'm expecting, I think, that to be... Uh, not the jungle, just because I've heard that AP junglers have really taken a hit. Right, right. But uh, we never know. We could see it. We did see Lilia earlier. Uh, so Michigan's not afraid to play those AP junglers. All right, and the first solo lane out of mid or Oakland, rather, is going to be Scion. They're taking the, the blind Scion pick. They're saying, you know what? Even if I don't do well in lane... I'm just going to be a, a giant, uh, to use Captain Flowers' word, just going to be a giant meatball up in the up in the top lane. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what Michigan wants to do in response. They're going to pick up the victor. They said it didn't work for you, but we think we can pull it off. And let's see if this final piece of the puzzle will uh, help us figure out where these lane assignments are going. Shield's gonna get the counter pick here. They're gonna pick Set. All right, so I think Set and Victor, I, I do think it's gonna be Gragas Jungle now, uh, but I think Set and Victor are just gonna go to whatever lane, you know, isn't the counter that Keelan's gonna pull out here. That is, yeah, that is a very good possibility. So it looks like we're thinking some hyperscaling over here on the on the OU side. Yeah, survived uh, the early oh. game. And, oh, with Galio. Switches it up to Galio, okay. So looking for the, the big engages on Leona Scion and Galio following up. It did work really well for them in game one. Um but again, you know, they, they had that poppy in game one. Here they have the Scion. I know Scion can put out some damage. Uh you know, but it's not as as much of a protector as Poppy was. Right. And meanwhile, on University of Michigan side, it does look like set top, Victor mid. We will have that Gragas in the jungle. Um, I'm I'm curious to see how Instant T performs on the Samira. Crushed it last game on the Kai'Sa and yeah. decided this time to go Samira. I, uh, I like OU's comp. I think they just have to... Uh fix what happened last game, survive the early game, and if they can do that, I think they can pull it out in the late game. Yeah, we do know that uh, Johnstar, uh, Gragas Jungle, does not have any issues ganking early, so we'll see if he pulls that out again, tries to put a lane behind and keep him down, and we'll see if OU can, uh, can fight to those mid-game, late-game team fights, uh, where I think, I think they have the better comp. I would, um, I would agree. All right, well, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Don't miss it. Game three for all the marbles. We'll be back.
All right, um, welcome to game three of the Evil Geniuses Midwestern Tournament. We have University of Michigan on the blue side versus Oakland University on the red side. Winner of this game is going to go on to the semifinals. And here to, uh, to guide you through this wild ride, I am Coach Apollo, and joining me is... It's Haas. It's Haas. All right. So we're going to be running you through this final game. It's going to be an exciting one. Game one was a nail biter. Oakland squeaks it out. Game two, Michigan came back swinging and, uh, you know, took some early shots and won very convincingly. Now let's see how we do game three. Yeah, I'm excited. Oh, I'm super excited. I mean, like semifinals. Here, though. Uh, we do get a pause. Um, so I guess we got a little bit of time to talk. Uh, this is the first pause, actually, I think, of all tournament, or at least that we've seen. Um, so I think, I think what we're going to be looking here for is to see if uh, Johnster can get uh, some early ganks off, uh, probably in the bot lane or uh, in the top lane, to see if they can get either of those two early game champs snowballing. Uh, yeah, we definitely saw that was the game plan uh, last game on the Jarvan. Just some early game ganks, uh, kind of got some good kills out on bot lane, and it just kept coming back and made sure that they, they stayed down. So I imagine with a Gragas, another good ganking champion, that we might see more of that. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I, I think if this game goes past 25 minutes, we're looking at a really OU favored win. Um, and anything before that, we're looking more uh, University of Michigan favored. Yeah, we do have some good scaling, you know, coming out of the the Scion, the the Galio, the Ash. Um, but we do have some really good early, you know, set set can put out some serious damage. Gragas is a great ganker. You know, we we have uh, Victor, Victor and Samira. They scale a bit, but I don't think that's going to be enough to overcome, you know, the kind of team fight comp that uh that oakland's put together here right so we're just gonna enjoy the uh the scenery for now um we're looking at thresh here hanging out in the bush scouting things out little does he know that everyone's frozen it looks like they're ready i am seeing the r's coming out and the game will resume and pause. Jungle day. Okay. Okay. So we. All right. Now we're ready. Here now we go. Ready. We faked you out with the first one, but now we're actually getting into it. All right. Here we go. Uh, we do see uh, Tupac again, way up in the front bush, making sure that they aren't, uh, you know, going to sneak into the lane and try to cheese him level one. And red side start for Graves. Uh, blue side start, or I mean red side start with Gragas with a little bit of health, uh, or help. I guess it'll make him healthier too. Uh, but pretty standard stuff so far. Sham while going for an early trade, gonna miss Scion's Q. Uh, unfortunately, it's John's going to be at the mercy of this Scion early. Set. Or, right? Si yeah, yeah, sorry, <laughs> yes. It's John's going to be at the mercy of right. this set. He's on the Scion. Yeah. Uh, we did switch sides again, so, you know, red side this time is Oakland. Good flay coming out from uh, Mexican Thunder there to stop the Tupac engage. But they do have, uh, Oakland does have early control of this bot lane. Gragas should be passing up towards his topside jungle here. Yeah, it does look like he's on his way up there. Um, looks like we're just gonna split the map. Uh, Graves definitely, uh, 
you know, looks like he's got the faster clear at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. John with a nice trade on the ShamWow. All right, we do see Graves gonna scout out, see if he can get any counter jungling in, but sees it's gone. So immediately pings exactly where Gragas is. That's jungle pattern for you. Endrit throws up the hawk shot to see if he can find him. Sees that it's clear there, so they know Gragas is somewhere in the river. Good, uh, good early information. Shamwow, the fake chunk onto its John. Yeah, like you said, really uh, abusing the matchup here, and it looks like they're gonna try for that early gank you were talking about. John we do see the way Gragas with the flash body slam and set. Gonna pick up first blood onto its John. Yeah, that, that flash body slam was was nice. It's hard, you know, it's hard to dodge that. Yeah. When you can just flash in whatever direction. And a good follow-up by ShamWow to make sure they pull him back for the stun. And unfortunately, you know, it's John just couldn't quite get out of it. So that was that early game gank that uh, you were talking about, you know. Gragas is going to try to find either top or bot lane and push him down. Now, without Flash, let's see if uh, if Jonstar is going to make his way back up there. Not even trade back and forth. Here comes Mushin. Leona, ease in, gets the thrust to use his play. We have the smoke screen maybe come out here. There it is. Flash. Doesn't look like anything's gonna really come of it. Good disengage coming out of the bot lane from Michigan there. Uh, making sure that, you know, they went in opposite directions so the lantern can get the full effect. And the flay to stop the Leona engage was, was definitely crucial. Looks like uh, Oakland this time. Oakland finally gonna start with the, uh-oh, but here comes Johnstar, and oh, he manages to steal it. We were praising Michigan for their, their early game dragon control all series. Finally, Oakland gets a chance, but nope, comes in and takes it right out from under them. He must have timed that perfectly with his Q and smite. I want to say, I, I think that was frame perfect. I didn't even see a number come up. It was just dead. Jamwon might look for a dive, but instead he's going to be chunked. Yeah, you can never underestimate that, that Scion damage. He can always surprise you with it. And, you know, next thing you know, he's running you over. We are seeing a... Uh, a decent CS lead here, but probably gonna come back down in the bot lane. We do have basically a full wave here. Um, and across the map, everything seems to be pretty even, although uh, with that Dragon Steel, Gragas has taken a couple camp lead now on uh, Graves, Mushin on the Graves here. Yeah, that was unfortunate because uh, so far, uh, Gragas has only gotten one successful gank off so far. Granted, it's only seven minutes, but things are pretty even so far. Yeah, pretty even. We've got the the first blood lead, uh, about 900 gold onto onto the side of Michigan, about a thousand. So, so far, uh, pretty good. We do see uh, a dual invade up top, although nothing's coming of it. We do get the ultimate out of Gragas and the flash from Graves. Oh, and just as we look up there, we see that Leona goes down bot lane. Ash gets the kill. That is two kills to the bot lane. That's got to feel good. Yeah, that is big. It means Gragas might have to start showing attention down into this bot lane if uh, Endrit and Tupac can keep uh, abusing Instant T and Mexican Thunder. Yeah, not only that, we saw in game one, oh man, can Endrick carry a game? 
Yeah, absolutely. All right, and we see just like that, the gold lead has been, you know, taken away. We're, we're essentially even at this point. Oh, you with just a slight edge, I think, just due to where the waves are, but, you know. Well, they were down about 1K right. 30 seconds ago, so, you know, it's, uh, it's on the rise for OU. Oh, we do spot out uh, Thresh there. Mushin just running through. Uh, you know, looks I... like we are doing maybe a Herald setup here with, with both supports in the mid lane. I think if OU would have uh, picked up that drag, I'd say they're winning the early game. Oh, absolutely. If that dragon didn't get stolen away, I think OU would love the position they're in. Still still got to be happy, but yeah. you know, it is a little bit of a bummer. It was a lot better than where they were early game, but Samira might be caught out here. The ultimate catches her. He's going to follow through with the stun, and Endrit's going to pick up his second kill. That's got to feel good. Endrit is saying, all right, you know, you might have gotten me game two, but I am ready game three. Meanwhile, top lane, we see uh, another skirmish. Oh, almost takes him out with a collateral damage. We also see Victor getting chased off by Galio. He's also forced to blow his flash. OU wins fights in all three lanes. Yeah, this is exactly what you want to see if you're an OU fan here. Early game going well. Great mid game team fights uh, possibility for OU. And even the late game looks pretty solid. Yeah, and especially, you know, these early kills on to Endrit. He's he's the guy that you want these kills on. Yeah. We might have something here again as Goes the Lantern up. takes Samir to safety. Galio's coming in too. Will they have enough to take care of Thresh? No. No, sir. Ash Arrow just came up. Oh, I thought they were holding it for the Samira. I guess that makes nope. sense too. No, nope, it had just come up. All right, and it does look like Oakland is going to try to focus on this second drag. Uh, they're definitely hoping it does not go the same way as the first. Looks like for now they're gonna kind of leave it be. Maybe wait for a more advantageous time. Man, we are just constantly fighting up here in the top lane. That's why I love to play top lane. Just the constant brawls. Yeah. The, the 1v1. All right, we got both junglers uh -oh. here in the bot lane. Thrash oversteps it boundaries there a little bit. Andrew's gonna pick up another kill. Felt pretty confident with Gragas nearby, but did not yeah. expect the Graves to be right there, too. Uh-oh. May have bitten off more than he can chew there. Will he get the trade kill? He's gonna chase him down. It's gonna be close, but he's gonna be just out of reach. Just fast enough. That is a solo kill from ShamWow onto It's John. But it looks like in return, uh, bot lane is gonna use that uh, that kill to grab themselves an Ocean Drake. And we will have Mountain Drake for our final game of the day here. Or Mountain Soul, rather. Which honestly is gonna be very good on uh, OU's comp. They have uh, two tanks and, I mean, I would argue that Galio's like, yeah, like he's up tank, there. You know? yeah. 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 So, um, so far, I think looks great for OU. Yeah, and that would also mitigate some of, uh, you know, the terrifying burst damage that we see out of Victor. You know, having a nice mountain shield would, uh, you know, might help that a little bit. Yeah. Oh, Zion's they do. Be with catch. Here. Q. It's going to be Does get interrupted. Body slam. And, you know, the fat man's just going to waddle away. All right, we do have first mythic item, Kraken Slayer, early, coming out from Endrit. Uh, he's, he's got some money. He's feeling good. Although, we do drop Rift Herald top. 
you hate to you hate to see that as a top laner. You're you're having a nice lane phase, then all of a sudden the jungler comes up and just drops a rift herald in your lane. And it's just and that will bring us to one plate, and you know quite a bit of money on this set right now. It looks like uh, this set early to mid is going to be what University of Michigan is, you know, looking to to get ahead with. And he goes Bork first item, which uh, is pretty interesting. He decides to skip out on the mythic item as. Uh, First choice. Great. The instant flash body slam into the, the kill. That was that was just tough. <laughs> Not yeah, much to do there. Can, can't react to that. All right, things are calming down a little bit. This is back to uh, back to our normal laning phase as the turret plates are falling off. Uh, a very close game. We've got an 800 gold difference, three to four kills, one dragon apiece. Um, it's looking it's looking like game one. Cyan ulting back to lane. Will not connect with the set, but he will lose his tower. And that is first tower over to set. Yeah, this set is getting a ton of solo gold right now. He had a solo kill. He had Rift dropped in his lane. Gets first tower gold. Uh, this set's got a uh, he's got a good amount of money right now. It'll be interesting to see what he comes back and buys. Um, I see the iron like spike. Iron, like whip. I'm gonna assume that's gonna be a gore drinker. I believe so. Um, have they caught out bot lane here? They engage on the thresh. Thresh flashes out. Throws down. The prison. A good, good disengager. They almost catch the Thresh, but Dragas comes in, stops them from chasing too far, and they're able to, uh, everyone gets away. Uh, that is a pretty big win for Bot, you know, because they do force off their lane. Let's see if they stick around. There's no more plating, so I guess there's no reason to stick around. And everyone will reset. This is going to be a squishy set. Uh, that is one of the uh, one of the pluses. Is this set is uh, you know he's going Bork Gore Drinker. He's going to have a lot of life steal, a lot of healing, but not as much health. Oh, junglers find one another, and once again the barrel combo just deletes Graves. University of Michigan have found themselves a two gold lead here at 16 minutes, um, which is something I think we kind of expected, but uh -oh. Smear might be caught out here. Ash, raining down the fire. Endrit does get the solo kill down there, but at the price of their mid lane turret, and now it looks like the rest of Michigan is on their way to find him. Looks like both teams are itching for a fight here. Zion, the big man, charges in, charges up the Q, hits the Thresh, Victor onto the back line. As Galio he's up by the Haymaker. Oh, this is, oh, that's a 3-0 fight in the favor of Michigan. Uh, it looked like there was, it was a good start, but the Zion kind of got isolated using his ult couldn't really follow up and you know Michigan just kind of uh, extended the fight out I think has that better early game team fight and managed to uh, manage to take that one pretty convincingly uh, we are starting to see some bounties come out on the side of uh, Michigan so if uh, Entrick can keep finding these kills or, or anyone else on OU they can start to claw that lead back, but it is up above 3k now, almost 4k. Um, but we're getting closer to that that mid mid late game that we think OU is going to take it. Yeah, it is a little over a 3k gold lead for University of Michigan. Um, I think if OU can just kind of find some of these turrets to like claw their way back in or just farm back up. 
they can uh, they can take this game after 25 minutes. I still believe. Yeah, they're certainly not out of it. Um, we did expect uh, Michigan to have the stronger early game team, uh, and they've demonstrated so far with a couple early ganks, uh, a couple early fight wins that they definitely are not afraid to flex that power. Um, but we'll see if Oakland can kind of make their way back as the, the scaling starts to kick in. Gragas might be looking to take this Rift Herald here. Yeah, it looks like he's on it pretty uncontested. Nushin is down on the bottom side, maybe looking for Victor after that Gromp, but I think Victor knows what's up. He is a speedy man. Yeah, that phase rush. Fresh misses the flame, the hook on the Leona. Grog is still taking that Rift Herald. He's, yeah, he's taking his time with it, that's for sure. Uh, but things have slowed down, which I think favors Oakland. You know, it's getting them towards that mid, mid late even faster they're just farming up although we do see a tp coming in this might be the play no oakland too quick to react and you know the tp play kind of just fizzles out yeah well played by oakland i think if oakland can get this next drake too um i mean it just stalls the game out even more absolutely if they can get another drake you know prevent that soul point like you said, stall out the game another five minutes. I think that's exactly what they want to be looking for. All right, and we just kind of are, you know, slowly moving along. Everyone's just farming up. You can see the, the gold lead is kind of stabilized around three and a half to 4,000. So, you know, no one's getting any further ahead, further behind. We're just moving on. And I'm surprised Ash opted for, um, I, don't, I don't know the builds yet, but I'm surprised she opted for the Kraken Slayer over uh, the Immortal Shadow, where their team's gonna be trying to, uh, you know, jump on the Ash. And I'm surprised she wouldn't have opted for that extra survivability, so be interesting to see if she can manage to stay safe and fire on the back line because if she can she will dish out the damage uh yeah we'll we'll see how that goes um i've heard all sorts of builds for ash you know from you know gale force to uh oh man the rage blade although i think the rage blade got fixed where it doesn't apply her passive anymore so probably not so much there uh but yeah interested to see where it goes and our stats guy, Quang, is chiming in. Uh, he's not sure if uh, OU has the late game, because he's, he's pretty confident in Victor's ability to 1v9. I mean, Victor is definitely a scary champ. And Samira, oh, does not go out. Keelan finishes the kill. Keelan's like, yeah, you're not getting out that easy. Oh, but Graves is deleted again by the Gragas. Ash is pulled in, can't get out, finally flashes out, and is taken out by the Thresh. And poor Tupac here, all alone just gonna slowly get whittled down and again another another mid-game fight going in the way of Michigan it was a good reaction to the uh the fact that Samira lived so long and they had used so many resources to kill that Samira you know they're able to turn the fight around I mean so far though Michigan has done a very good job of finding fights where they haven't had to fight front to back They've always been catching them on these weird side flanks. Um, which is yeah. not like what we saw in game one where where it was constant front to back fighting. Yeah, exactly. We, we didn't see, you know, we saw the, the Akali trying to do those flanks, but, uh, you know, oh, you did a great job of stopping that in game one. So far here, we, we see uh, Gragas is getting some big barrel combos and just, you know, removing graves. Yeah. And then, you know, the rest of the team just doesn't quite have enough damage. All right, about a 5k gold lead up here. 
for Event Master Arrow's gonna go out. And Samira eats it. <laughs> yep. Always feels bad. You know, Samira bought so much time in that last fight where she was originally caught out, but she managed to live by blocking those autos. And it caused Keelan to have to flash in to get the kill. You know, the fight could have went completely different if uh, she wasn't able to block those autos. Yeah, absolutely. It bought enough time for uh, Gragas and I believe it was Thresh to find Graves on the side, for Set to come in down the river and throw Galio back in. And here we have another engage. Ash once again caught out by the set. This set is now on a rampage, and it looks like uh, like Michigan is recognizing that Endrit is kind of the the win condition right now. Yeah. So they're they're picking him out every time they get the chance. And it looks like this is going to lead to an uncontested Baron. And I think U of M is, uh, they're, they're getting far enough ahead that it might not matter if they, if they are better or not, you know, in the yeah. late game. Yeah, the gold lead is starting to become insurmountable with a uh, over 7k gold lead. They'll just... Uh... It won't even matter if they have tanks in front of them. They'll just chew right through the tanks. And then if Scion is even frontlining, Set just uses that as a free ticket to the back line. So yeah, this is looking looking tough for OU, but you know it's not over. But it's getting there. All right, we do see um, moving up that vision line from Michigan, making sure that they, uh, you know, they can find those picks they've been getting. Easy setups on, uh, you know, flanks. I believe Seth's building himself towards the dust dance, so we thought he was hard to kill already. Oh man, Gorg Drinker with the death stance and the Bork. Yeah. Oh man. Victor's almost close to that uh, rabbit on death cap. Oh, Leona hits the engage and Set throws him back. Not probably where he wanted to find himself. All right, and it's looking like Oh, have they caught Victor here? The Ash Arrow hits with the instant cleanse. And it looks like everything is just falling Michigan's way. Uh, we have Dragon Soul coming up in a minute. This is going to be a, this is gonna be a tough one. You gotta imagine Oakland has to fight for that soul. Yeah, for sure. Oh, poor Galio just bounce housed right there. Nothing Keelan can do about it. And it's looking, uh, it's looking harder and harder. That climb is getting steeper. And it looks like Michigan's actually just gonna take this all the way up to the inhibitor. And that's just gonna make taking this dragon even easier. The five man recall coming out just in time to set up for Dragon. We see OU is gonna make their last stand here. Uh, if they don't get this Dragon and win this fight, I think it might just be over. Yeah, I would have to agree with you. I don't think they, uh, OU will be able to cut through three, uh, was it 18% additional armor and magic resist? Yeah, on top of the shields, on top of yeah. already pretty beefy guys and set and uh, Thresh here. All right, well, here it is. It looks like the engage is coming through. Sahayan actually just deletes Graves. And we see again, Ash caught out on the backside. Gragas finishes him off. And 
OU is in full retreat, and it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. A four for nothing. U of M saying, we don't even need the Dragon Soul. We're going to teleport in to the supers at your Nexus, and it looks like they're going to go end the game. GG, well played, University of Michigan and OU. Absolutely. It's a hard series. Absolutely. GG, Michigan. Um, we'll be rooting for them tomorrow in the semifinals. Uh, three well fought games, and, uh, you know, just a good series all around. It's a bummer that uh, we're, we're leaving here, but. You know, I think I think our boys did well. That was a good performance today. I'm I'm proud of where they were at. Yeah, I've I've been watching uh, since the team was uh, first formed, and I think I think they looked great this tournament. Uh, I uh, I've been really impressed with how far they've come to the team. Yeah, and it's not like using to losing to you know Michigan is a you know some big deal. They're a good team, so to take a game off, take them to three series or three game series, and uh, you know, fight all three games, love to see it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I think that's going to be it for uh, for us today. Um, you know, you can tune in tomorrow uh, to watch the semifinals and the finals on EG's Twitch channel. We won't be streaming, but uh, you know, if you want to cheer on U of M for the rest of the way, go see them. Uh, this has been Coach Apollo and. Uh, my my co-caster here who is uh it's hot i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i kind of threw it at you and we'll be out for uh, for the rest of the night enjoy your weekend everybody thank you so much for watching if you want to see more content like that be sure to follow our twitch channel at oakland esports and if you want more updates on the oakland university esports program you can find them on twitter and instagram at oakland esports